Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're comparing a few different uh, serial to USB adapters and the discussion started ever since I showed the uh, CH340E breakout board I designed in vlog 249. People wanted to know if uh, the CH340E affordable chip would perform similar to the well-known FTDI or Silicon Labs chips. And I'm thinking at high throughput and reliability here. The kind of applications where you are sending lots of data fast and you need it to be transferred reliably. So today I'm going to uh, be comparing the CP2103, which is right here on this black PCB, with the CH340E on this small breakout board and the FT232RL. I wasn't sure what measurements to take and how to test these, but I devised two testing methods. The first one involves connecting each of the adapters to my computer, shorting RX and TX pins for a loopback test, and then sending a bunch of lines from a terminal window. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com, a professional PCB supplier who can offer 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for just $2. You also have a selection of solder mask colors with no extra cost and affordable laser cut stencils, so it's definitely worth checking them out. I use Realterm for this because of its versatility and vast amount of options. If the same number of characters are received in the terminal, it meant the interface had no errors. I specifically went with a long string of 72 characters plus a carriage return character, so that was 73 characters in total. To make it even more difficult, I was sending this line 600 times as fast as it was possible to send over the selected uh, 900k baud rate. I believe this is particularly demanding for the converter chips because they would be sending and receiving data at the same time, putting stress on their processing routine and probably maxing out their buffers. Please note that the results obtained in this test might be affected by things happening on the host machine, specifically driver level stuff since the virtual serial port was used. The test was performed on a Windows 10 machine for reference. For example, a specific driver for the FT232 chip might be configured such that it performs worse in this test and that might not reflect the actual hardware performance of the chip. First, the CP2103 on the black PCB transferred 32,768 bytes and this number looks familiar, it's the maximum positive value for a 2-byte signed integer. So this could very well be a number set in a driver config somewhere, either in the operating system or maybe in the terminal software or maybe even in the USB to serial conversion. After about 20 seconds, I was, I was surprised that it also transferred the remaining bytes up to 43,800, which would be 600 lines times 73 bytes. So in the end, it transferred all the bytes, but uh, reliably and in real time it only transferred uh, 32,768. Next, the CH340E transferred 32,800 bytes and this number doesn't look interesting but for comparison purposes it's very similar to what we had before. However, this time it did not seem to transfer the uh, remaining bytes up to the uh, full amount, it just stayed at that value. Next, the FT232 transferred 25,010 bytes and then it stopped there. After these three tests, I wasn't getting a feeling that uh, this is a reliable measuring method, so I decided to redo these tests and to my surprise, I got completely different results. So in the end, I would say this is not a reliable measurement method because I suspect there are things happening at the operating system driver level that influence the uh, results we're getting in this test. The second test I devised involved using the modules as a transmitter but with nothing connected on the output, just an oscilloscope probe. I just wanted to check if they will output continuously or if they have any kind of issue when there is a lot of data to transmit. I was using the same 600 lines of 73 bytes each. The first to test was the CP2103 and the waveform looked very clean, no interruption at all. It seemed like it transferred all 600 lines in one go. But on subsequent tries I saw interruptions happening in the waveform, so either the host system or the adapter stopped at some point before continuing to send data. 
Next, I connected the CH340E and here the waveform looked good in the first try, no interruptions, but next, surprisingly, it also looked good on subsequent tries, no interruptions at all, no matter how many times I retried. Next, the FT232RL chip, once again, the waveform looked good and it also looked good on subsequent tries, no interruptions seen here as well. So after these tests have been performed, I don't have a feeling that the results I got are very conclusive, especially for the first test where results I think depend highly on variables from the operating system. I feel a bit more confident by the second test I did with the oscilloscope because even though I repeated the test several times, I got similar results with each attempt. I'm not going to say that the CH340E is better or worse than the others, I'm just going to say that it performed just as well and I see no reason not to use this in your next project. It's cheap, it doesn't need a lot of external parts, it's small in its uh, MSOP10 package, so I think it's a good option to consider. That was all for today, I would really appreciate your support on Patreon or even just hitting the like button on this page. Also let me know your thoughts in the comments below, have you ever tried testing USB to serial converters and what testing methods did you use? Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week with a new video.